In this video, we're going over how to use the Samsung Galaxy A03 for beginners. Welcome back to another video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne. And the video today, I'm gonna to walk you through everything you need to know to use the Samsung Galaxy A03. And my goal is to just educate you on how to use this phone. We're gonna go over everything from how to make calls, how to answer the phone, how to send text messages, the layout of the phone, how to download an app, how to sync your email account with the phone, um, how to control the volume, um, and how to save a contact. Those will be some of the main topics covered in the video today. So stay tuned all the way until the end so you can get a full rundown of how to use this phone. And also after you watch that link. Now before we get started, I just wanna show you this really cool wallet that I've just started to use. It's called a Code 118. It is an RFID blocking wallet, which means that scammers cannot um, hack into your credit cards with uh, their hacking machines because the material it's made of is blocking those signals so they cannot uh, attack your wallet. Um, it's very sleek and slim. You hit this button here to pop up the main cards that you use to pay. And you have the strap for a sort of money clip and also to hold some of your membership cards and IDs. I'll have a link below for this in the description. Father's Day is coming up. Uh, at the time of this video. So if you're looking for a gift for uh, the man in your life, um, this is a cool gift. In this section, we're gonna go over how to make phone calls and also how to answer the phone when someone is calling you. So let's start with how to make a phone call. What you're gonna do is go to the green phone icon in the bottom left corner of your screen and tap on the little phone button there. And for us to make a phone call, we're going to enter the phone number. So just the area code and the phone number. And then we're gonna tap the green button here to start the call. And you'll see, this is what it'll look like when you're dialing. And if you'd like to put the phone on speakerphone, you can tap on the speaker button here and that will play it loud if you don't wanna hold it up to your ear. And then if you're ready to disconnect the call, you can simply hit the red button here and that will end the call. So that's how you make a call. Next, I wanna show you how to receive a call and it's gonna come through a few different ways. So if someone calls you, this is what you'll need to do to answer the phone. So first I'm gonna go over if you're using the phone and someone calls you, what is that gonna look like? So let's initiate a call and you'll see a little pop-up at the top of the screen. It's gonna show the phone number, and I can either tap on the answer button to pick up the call, or tap the decline, the red button, to decline it. I'm gonna tap the green button, and this is gonna pick up the call and allow me to begin speaking to the person. Hello, who's there? And when you're all done, hit the red button, and that will end the call. Now, if I were to turn the phone off, let's say your phone is on the counter and it's not being used, the, when someone calls you, it's gonna look a little different when that call comes through. It's gonna look like this. So I'm initiating another call now. So this is what it'll look like. You'll see these two buttons, green circle and a red circle. To answer it, you have to put your finger on the button and then you have to drag it. That's how you answer it. So really important, um, you don't tap the button, you have to put your finger on it and, and drag. Drag it across the screen and that's how it will pick up the call. And when you're all finished, same thing, just tap the red button to end the call. I wanna show it one more time, just so you guys can see the motion. So call is gonna come in, you'll see the pop-up. This time I'm not gonna answer it, I want to decline the call. So I'm gonna put my finger on the red phone and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna drag it across the screen and that will decline the call. So now that it's not gonna answer the phone, okay? So that is how you answer the phone if someone is trying to call you.
In this section, we're going over how to navigate the phone, and we're gonna start with how to navigate the exterior button. So I'm gonna go over all the buttons you'll see on the outside of the phone, and then we'll go over how to navigate the home screen and the different sections of the phone you'll need to know about. So first things first, there's no buttons on the left side of the phone, no buttons. All you'll see on the left is a SIM slot and that's where you would uh, put in the SIM card for the phone and also if you had a memory card in your old phone, you would insert it on this left side here. On the right side of the phone, you'll have a volume up, volume down, and a power button. And also, for those of you that would like to take full advantage of the phone, the power button also works as a, a fingerprint reader that you can program to unlock the phone simply when you put your finger on the power button. So that's an important thing to note. Now, I have a link to another video where I go over setting up this phone and I show you how to set up that fingerprint sensor. So that video will also be in the description. So make sure you check out that one after you watch this video. Okay, at the very top of the phone, there is nothing, just speakers. And then at the bottom of the phone, You'll have an auxiliary jack here, and sorry, it's just a hair blurry. Let's just fix that. So you will have two things, there we go. The headphone jack here, so you can plug in your wired headphones, and you'll have your charging port. Now this phone uses a type C charging uh, type. So if you needed to buy a new charger, make sure you look for a type C charger. So that's the exterior of the phone. And next we're gonna walk through using uh, or just navigating the screen in general. Okay, so let's talk about navigating the, the home screen. So there's three main buttons on the phone that you'll use to navigate the screen. At the bottom here you'll see there is three buttons, a recent apps button, there is the home button, and the back button. Now let's start with the home button. The home button is used to take you back to this screen, which is considered the home screen. So if you tapped on any one of these little icons known as apps, apps is short for application. Think of an application like uh, a program on a computer. Computers have programs, phones have applications or apps. If I tap on one of these apps, let's say I go to the calculator, and then I'd like to go back to the home screen, I'm just gonna tap on the little circle or the home button at the bottom, and that's gonna take me back to the home screen. So no matter what you're doing, tapping the home button will always take you back to this screen, okay? Next, we're gonna go over the back button on the right side. Now to, to demonstrate this, I'm gonna go to the settings. And let's say I'm in the settings and I were to tap on one of the options like the uh, advanced features. And let's say I'm looking through the settings and now I wanna go back one page. I'm gonna tap on my back button here to take me back to the last page I was on. So here, now it took me back one step or one page. And if I were to tap the back button again, it's gonna take me out of the app and back home. Watch this. So that's how the back button works. It just takes you back one step, and once it's taking you back as far as it can, it will just take you back to the home screen. Now the button on the left is called the Recent Apps button. Now, every time we open one of these little apps here, when we tap the home button, it takes us out of that app and takes us back to the home screen, but the app is still running in the background of the phone. If you tap on this button, Recent Apps, you can see, guess what? I was just in the settings and it's still open here. And I was just in the calculator and you'll see the calculator application is still open. Apps do not close just because you've gone back to the home screen. They stay running. So if you ever wanna go back to an app you were using, all you have to do is tap Recent Apps and you can go and swipe through all of the applications you were previously using. Notice a few minutes ago we were using the dialer and there is the dialer, it's still open. Now if you'd like to close these applications because you're no longer gonna use them, you can either swipe up like this, swiping motion up, 
or you can tap the close all button and this will close all of those applications that are running in the background. Now when I hit recent apps, nothing is open. So that's how you navigate the home screen or, and those are the basic buttons you'll be using to navigate the entire phone. Now, once again, we're on what's called the home screen. If you swipe up like this, it will take you to what is called the app drawer. And this is where you'll find all of the applications or apps that come with the phone. And also if you download new applications, they will also show up in this same section. Later on in the video, I'm gonna show you how to download an application so you can see what that process looks like. But for now, we're just going over where do I find the applications and it's here. Now notice at the top of the screen here, you have these little white circles. These are folders. This is a Google folder that just has Google specific applications. So your Gmail, your Google Maps, your Google Photos are all gonna be in this folder. You have a Metro by T-Mobile folder that has Metro specific applications. And then you have a Samsung folder that will have Samsung specific applications here. So that's the app drawer. Next, by swiping down from the top of the screen, we're gonna just take our finger. At the top of the screen, we're just going to swipe down. This will take us to what is called the notification panel. And here is where you will get uh, notifications uh, regarding different applications that you have synced on your phone. For example, I have my email synced on the phone. So right here I can see I have some new emails. And if I wanted to go to the email app so I can read those emails, I'm just gonna tap right here and it will take me right to my Gmail app. And then I can begin looking at my emails. Don't worry, we will go over how to set up emails later on in the video, so hang tight for that part as well. Now swiping down again, you'll see other type of applications here. For example, if someone sends you a text message, um, if you have Facebook on your phone, you'll get all your Facebook notifications all in this section as well. It all depends on what applications you choose to download on the phone, they will all show up here as new information is being uh, notified to you. Now at the top here, you'll see these little switches. These are called notification. These switches are all shortcuts to different settings for the phone. So they've taken all the most important items from the settings and they've just given you a quick little button to turn them on, on and off. So for example, if you'd like to connect to your home Wi-Fi, you need to make sure this is lit up. This is your Wi-Fi icon. Now if I tap on it and, it and it goes gray, guess what? Now that means my Wi-Fi is turned off. If I tap it again, guess what? It's blue and Wi-Fi is now turned on again. The next button here is your volume button. Now this is the button you'll use to control the volume on the phone. So for example, the way you see it now, this means that your, your volume is up. And if I tap it one time, it's gonna put a slash over the icon. And that means your phone is now on vibrate. Tap it again. If you notice it's gray now, that means your phone is on silent, so it will not make any noise. And if I tap it again, it will turn that volume right back up. So that's how you control the volume on the phone. You'll also have Bluetooth, screen rotation, your airplane mode, and your flashlight. If you'd like to turn on your flashlight, you tap on this little icon here. And now we have our flashlight. It'll use the phone's flash as a flashlight. Now these are only a few of the switches that are available. By swiping down from the top of the screen, again, you will have a list of even more shortcuts. I wanna show you that one more time. Swipe down once, swipe again, and here you'll see some other options. So your hotspot, for example, swipe to the left, you'll have a dark mode. This will change all your menus to dark and give you a nice uh, cleaner look. And now if you notice the whole section is dark. 
And these are just some of the other uh, switches that are available. So those are your notification switches. Okay, next quickly I wanna go over how to turn your phone on and off. Now, you can hold down on the power button. If you hold it for about two seconds, it will take you to this screen here, which will allow you to power off, restart, or turn on the emergency mode. You can also swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down one more time, and you will have this little button here. This is also your shortcut to the power button that will take you to that same power menu. So if you need to restart your phone, if you notice it's running a bit slow or having some issues or you just wanna turn it off, that's how you do it. In this section, we're gonna go over how to download applications. Now, applications are all gonna be downloaded in the Play Store. Now, we have it on our home screen here. If you don't see it on your home screen, just swipe up and you should have it in your app drawer section. Tap on Play Store. Now, one important note, um, if you have not signed into a Google account yet on your phone, you probably don't see this on the screen. You may see a white screen that's asking you to sign in to a Gmail account. One important note, you do need a Gmail or Google account in order to download applications on the phone. So on your screen, just quickly, for those of you that have not signed into a Gmail yet, in the bottom left corner, you should see a button that says create account. If you don't have a Gmail or if you had one and you forgot the information, just come down to create, set up a new Gmail account. It'll take two minutes and once that's finished, it'll take you to this screen where you'll be able to download applications. Now, I'm gonna show you quickly how to navigate this Play Store because there's a lot in here and I'll show you my little shortcut to download apps very quickly. So at the bottom of the screen here, you'll see categories. So games, for those of you looking for different games, at the top here, you'll see different categories. So top charts, kids, events, new, premium, categories. Best to go to categories and then you can see these are the, the different themes that the games are broken up into. So you can find, you know, the particular game that you might be looking for. You also have, so games, you have apps, you have, um, Movies, you can download movies from the store as well. You can rent, you can buy. You can also download books as well. Now let's go back to games and we're in the categories. I'm gonna go up to puzzle and let's say you wanna download Tetris. We can tap on the app here. Now, this green button here says install. If you ever see install on that green button, that means that it is a free game to play and a free game to download. So I can simply tap on the green button here and it will begin to download the game to the phone. Now, if that green box had a price in it, if it said $1, $5, $10, that's it telling you that this is not a free game. There is a fee. So you need to decide, do you want to pay for that or do you want to try to look for a free version? That is up to you. You'll see right here, it's giving you a status of uh, how the download is going and, and what percent it has to go. So this app is downloading, that's great. Now guess what, I'm gonna use my back button because I wanna go back one screen, just like that. I'm gonna press it again and press it one more time. And if you notice, that back button is just taking us back one step, one step, one step. So a very useful button to use. Now, let's say there's a specific application you're trying to download. Here, like rather than trying to search through and find it, all you have to do is do a search. And you can type, so I can go to the top of the screen in this box and tap in the box, and I can type in the name of the app that I'm trying to find manually, or I can simply tap on the microphone and I can just say it like this. DoorDash. 
So just like that, if you know the application you'd like to download, just hit that microphone, say it, and it should take you right to that application. And now, guess what? I'm gonna tap on that green button that says install, and it will begin to download DoorDash to the phone, just like that. I'm gonna tap on the home button now, and I'm gonna swipe up, and this is the app section. Now, I don't see those two apps I just downloaded. Where are they? Well. There's more than one page. We're just gonna swipe over and there it is. This is our Tetris game that we just downloaded. And oh, there's our DoorDash game. And there it is. Now we can easily do our DoorDash and have some fun ordering food for the house. So that's how you download an application. That's the basic process. Now, if you notice, that app is in the uh, app drawer, but it's not on my home screen. Now you may want to move it so you can have it on the front of your phone. To do that, you're gonna swipe up and you're gonna hold down, just take your finger and just gently press on the app for one second. And if you notice, after one second, it took us right to the home screen. And guess what? I'm gonna lift my finger and there it is. Now my app is on the home screen. Let's do it again for DoorDash. Take your finger, gentle press on the app and just keep it there. One 1,000, two 1,000. We're on the home screen. I'm gonna move it to the right and pick up my finger and there it is. And it's just that easy to download an app and move it right to your home screen. In the next section, we're going over how to send text messages. Now at the bottom of the screen, you will have this little blue icon. Now this is your text messaging app, and we're gonna use that to send and receive messages. So tap on the blue icon there. In the bottom right corner, you'll see a little blue bubble. Tap on the bubble, and now we're gonna either type in the phone number of the person that we want to message, or we can enter a name if you've already saved someone as a contact. And you know what? After we go over text messages, we're gonna go over how to save a contact to your phone so that it'll be easier for you to send messages and make calls later. So I'm gonna enter a phone number here. And I've entered my phone number. And guess what? I can actually save this number as a contact if I wanted to right now by hitting the plus right next to the number at the bottom here. I'm gonna wait, but I'm just telling you if you wanted to save that number, you would just hit the plus and that would let you save that number in your contacts. Now what I'm gonna do is on the keyboard, come down to the bottom right corner and hit next. And so my number is in and now you notice the cursor right next to enter message is flashing. So I'm gonna type in my message. Happy Monday. So I'm typing my message. Now guess what? Some of you guys may not want to type. And guess what? There's a shortcut for this too. So if you tap on the three dots in the upper right, right here. Oh, excuse me, not the three dots. We're gonna tap so this is actually what I was looking for, this row here. So this little row has a microphone on it. And when you tap the microphone, guess what? I can just say what I wanna type and it will type it for me just like this. I hope you're having a great day. When you're finished, just tap on the microphone. Now it recorded a little extra that it wanted to record so I can use this to back up and take some of those words out. And when you're finished, you can hit the back button right here and there's our message. Now I can send that message right now or I can tap on the little arrow here and I can hit this first icon here to attach a picture I've already taken on the phone. So just to show you what it looks like, I can attach this picture. So now along with my message will go a picture or I can take a picture right now and add it to it by tapping on the camera. So I'm gonna hit 
take a picture. I'm gonna point it, hit the little white button here to take the picture. And now I can hit OK. And now it's gonna attach these two pictures to my message. That's how you send a picture in your message. And then hit this button, which is the send button, and it's gonna send off our message. And that's it. That's how you send a text message. I'm gonna hit my back button now because I've finished sending this message and I wanna go back and see if I have any other messages. So I'm gonna hit the back button, hit it again. And this is the main page of the messages app. And if I wanna send a message to my friend Joe the third, I can just tap on this message and I can begin typing a message to this person. So you'll see the cursor, you'll say, hey, where's my keyboard? If you ever wanna bring up the keyboard, you have to tap in a section where you can type. So watch this, there we go. And there's our keyboard. Now I can begin typing my message to Joe. So that's how you send a text message and a picture. In this section, we're gonna go over how to save a phone number to your contacts. So when that person calls you or sends you a text message, it will have their name pop up instead of just a phone number. So the easiest way to do this is to go to the phone app, make sure you're on the keypad, and type in the phone number you would like to save. So I wanna save this number to my phone. So I just typed in the phone number and at the top of the screen, there's a little plus. Tap on the plus. Try again, I think I missed the plus. Hit the plus and it will ask you, do you wanna create a new contact or update an existing? So you would use in most cases, create new contact. However, if a friend of yours has gotten a new number, then you would want to use update existing and it would let you go to a contact you've already saved and then you can simply add that number to that contact. In this case, we're going to hit create new contact. It's going to ask you where you want to save that contact. I encourage you always save it to your Gmail. So I'm gonna tap Google, because if you save it to the phone or you save it to the SIM card and you lose the phone, guess what? You lose all the contacts with the phone. This way, the phone number is gonna be backed up to my Gmail account. That's why I always um, select the Google option. Now I'm just gonna type a name, Edward Jones. And then I can go down here and I can add an email address, a second phone number. I can hit view more and have all these other options I can add. So an email address, uh, an address, any important notes, websites, messenger contacts. I can hit ringtone and I can save a special ringtone sound. So when that person calls, it'll play a certain song. So you can do a lot. When you're finished, hit save and that will save that person's number in your phone. And that's how we save a contact. In the next section, we're gonna go over how to make the font bigger so you can see the words better in the event the words are too small for you. So we're gonna swipe down from the top of the screen. In the upper right corner, tap on this little wheel. There we go. We're gonna swipe up to display. And then we're gonna to go to font, size, and style. And here you have a few options. First, you can make the font bold. That'll make it easier to read things. Now look up here, you're gonna see this text get, get larger as we're making adjustments. So that's how you'll know that things are changing. So this is the current font size right now. This is two away from the left. As I drag this over, it's gonna make the font bigger. See that? You notice how this is getting bigger. 
So I would say maybe go to, the, to about this size and then go home and go to your messages and you can see what that looks like. Let's see. You notice the words are bigger, the letters are bigger, everything is bigger. If you like that, great. You can always hit recent apps here, go back to the settings and you can make it even larger if you need it to be bigger. But that's how you increase the size of the font. Now that should increase across just about all the applications on the phone, FYI. In the next section, we're gonna go over how to sign into your email account so you can get your emails on the phone. Now, to do this, you want to go to the Google folder on the home screen here. And we're going to tap on Gmail. Now, you might say to yourself, I don't have a Gmail. I have an AOL or a Yahoo or an SPC Global. Well, it doesn't matter. The Google account allows you to sign into other email accounts uh, aside from Google. So what it's gonna look like when you go to that app is this. This is the first thing you will see when you go to the Gmail app. So you have some options here. You can tap on Google if you're trying to sign into another Google account. Obviously you would select Outlook, Hotmail Live, Yahoo. Depending on the type of email account, you select the appropriate option. However, what if you don't see the email type that you have on the screen? For example, what if you have an AOL email account? Well, that option is not listed. So I'm gonna show you a trick on what you'll need to do if you have an email account type that is not listed on the screen here. Hit the home button. We're gonna go to the Play Store and I'm gonna hit that back button so I can get out of this. I wanna be on the main screen of the Play Store. Now where it says search for apps, we're gonna just tap in the box and we're gonna type in the at symbol. So in the bottom left corner, tap on the little symbols icon and tap on the at symbol and then tap ABC and we're gonna go AOL.com and we're gonna hit the search, and here it is. So uh, after our search, it's brought up the AOL app, so if you install this application, you can then sign into your AOL email, and you can get all your AOL emails through here. Now, maybe you don't have AOL, maybe you have a different type of email account. Same thing applies, just tap in the box, and you'll wanna just, after the at symbol, type in, the type of email account that you have, like an sbcglobal.net, and then it will recommend applications that will work with that email type. So the Yahoo Mail app will work with it, my at and or the Samsung email application will also work with that. So download it, and then you should be able to sign in using that email app, okay? So that's it, guys. This was our how to use the Samsung Galaxy phone for beginner video. Hope you guys found this helpful. Do me a favor, leave me a comment down below and let me know um, what sections of the video were the most helpful for you. And also if you have any follow-up things you would like to know about using this phone, I will have some links in the description section and in the comment section to those other videos I was telling you about. One of them being how to set up the A13. I'll show you how I would set the phone up. Um, and I'll also have a video on some cool tips and tricks and hidden features as well with the phone. So thanks for watching. If you're not already a race subscriber, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and stay tuned for more videos. Take care, and as always, have a good one.